Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our series of Microsoft Graph and in this video we are going to talk about batching process and what is the purpose of using batching in your applications. Now if you're watching the series from the beginning, in the last video we have discussed about Microsoft Graph pagination, the process wherein the response that has to be sent by Microsoft Graph to your application gets divided into different segments and then you can access each and every segment with the help of odata.next link. The core agenda of this video will be knowing what is the purpose of batching, how it works, what is the purpose of batch endpoint and how you can combine multiple queries in one single request. Now the purpose behind combining multiple queries in one single request is moreover related to how you deal with the memory management of your application. But the fact is that batching is not a kind of measure which is going to help you always but at times you may consider implementing batching because this helps you to reduce the number of requests which your application is making for a specific API. Now let's begin by understanding this with the help of an example. Consider a scenario where I have an application that exists on conceptswork.com and I will ask my user to navigate to this web link and then log in over there. Now, if we talk about the authentication process, it is exceptionally simple that the access token or the ID token that I will get for this particular user, it will have his or her display name. I can get that extracted and I can show it in my console. But let's say I want to access the photo of this particular user. Okay, in that case, I have to navigate to this particular URL. In the next case, I want to access the devices that belongs to this particular user or which he or she owns. Similarly, I also want to show that what are the last two sign-in attempts made by this particular user. Let's say the platform or let's say the browser or let's say the device. Okay, and last thing which I can show is the number of unread email that exist in this particular user's mailbox. In a typical application, you may be making four different queries. Okay, but consider a scenario wherein I can let you know a single method wherein you can include all these requests in one particular request that you are sending to Microsoft Graph API. And in the response, you will get all the effective details which you are looking for okay so in this kind of scenario what happens in a nutshell that your application will send only one request with the appropriate request body structure which is as of now shown on the screen and then you will get the appropriate results but this requires your application to have the appropriate permissions so that your application can actually perform a specific HTTP method for a specific endpoint of the API. So if I talk about the first segment where I'm trying to query photo, this requires user.read permission. The second segment where I'm trying to query the managed devices, this requires device management managed devices dot read dot all permission. The third segment requires you to have the privilege to access emails of the particular user, which will be mail dot read basic. And the last one is moreover related to audit logs itself, which your Azure Active Directory is going to generate. But if we talk about the structure of these queries, let's see how we can generate them. Okay, so the first section that you see here is the ID. The reference of this parameter is the number of requests that you are making. So as you can see, I'm making four different requests combined in one single query. That's why I have ID one, two, three, and four. Now, all these different queries are being done with the help of HTTP method get that means I'm simply getting the list of all the entities that exist on any of these endpoints. The first one you see is a simple query where I'm trying to query the photo of this particular user. The second one is the list of the managed devices. I'm not applying any advanced query in the first to requests. But if you talk about the third one, as you can see, I'm trying to reach Pay at the red concepts work.com user. I want to read 
messages and then I'm saying show me the count of those messages which are unread as of now. The fourth option that we see here is something where I'm trying to navigate a resource audit logs and then I'm checking sign-ins specifically in this particular category and I'm saying only display the first two results wherein the UPN is paymap.conceptsworld.com that means for this particular user only return the last two sign-in attempts but as I have addressed before that all these endpoints require different permissions to be granted so what I have done is I have already created an Azure AD application and I have manually granted these permissions to my application so that I can use client credential flow now let me show you guys this in action so it will be more relatable so for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my browser where I'm signed in as global admin. And this is the particular application which I have added by the name of Microsoft Graph Batch. Okay. Now, if I go to my API permission section, as you can see, all the permissions have been granted manually. The first one is user.readall, then you have mail.basicreadall, then with this we can access devices and with this particular permission I can access the sign-in logs now let me show you guys everything in action okay so this is my postman from where I will be sending a particular request and this is the endpoint that you have to reach after mentioning the version number all you have to do is you have to type dollar batch that's it okay and instead of doing a get request we will be doing post but we have to make sure that the access token which my application is getting has the appropriate permissions so that is something which I'm going to show you now that this is my client credential flow this is my client ID client secret an effective token endpoint mentioned over here and now I'm going to click on request token before I click on use token let's quickly show you that what all permissions are coming with this particular token so I'll copy this value and I'll click on use token and I'll again go to my browser and this time I will go to jwt.io and here we will decrypt this particular token to verify whether my application has the appropriate permissions or not okay so now I'm going to just paste the token which we have received and as you can see all the permissions are coming in this particular token now I'll come back to my postman console I have already clicked on use token that means the moment I will click on send my request will be sent but let's see what and all we have mentioned in the request body itself so for that I'm going to copy this particular value and now I'll go to my notepad and I'll paste this value and this is the same set of information which I was showing you in the deck Firstly, I'll try to query the photo, then I'll try to query the manage device, and then I will try to query messages. And lastly, I want to check the sign-in logs. So I'll come back to my postman. The request body is in place, as well as I have a valid access token, and I'll click on send. Okay, now let's see what and all we have received in response. So for that, I'll open a new notepad, and let's see what and all we are getting okay now the first section that you see here is moreover related to messages itself and as you can see I'm getting everything that exists in that particular messages but the fact is that I think I am NOT getting the required output that, that means that you may not want to query all this information let's say you only want to select the subject okay so for that what you can do in this query itself where we are saying messages I can say that only show me the select attribute of my message entity so for that what I'll do is I will type subject over here and then I'll say and and that's it I'll again click on send now let's see what we what all we get in response so I'll copy this value again and I'll come back to my notepad and I'll paste it again and let's see as you can see the response has been trimmed down now and I'm getting subject not 
all the attributes now this is the response that i have request or sorry that i have received for my third request when i'm querying my messages now this is something which is automatically structured depending upon the size of the request as you can see that there is no photo exist for this particular user so that's why it is showing the photo wasn't found now for id2 which was the managed device section i am getting the device attribute now again you can apply the select request to this particular section as well let's say i want to know device name and i want to know whether my device is compliant or not so what i'll do is i'll go to that section wherein i was querying devices and here i can say that select device name and compliance state okay now let's click on send and let's see what all we get in response the expected behavior is that now i should only get two attributes listed for the device okay so i'll remove the section again and let's scroll down and let's see what and all we are getting for device okay so this section is actually showing me the sign in logs let's scroll up a bit more and let's see what all we are getting for device okay perfect this section is only listing down the device name as well as compliance state so this way you can actually combine multiple advanced queries in one single request that you have to mention but make sure in url section you are not mentioning this particular section which is graph.microsoft.com forward slash beta now this section of the endpoint is actually automatically combined with this particular value and that's why you get the appropriate result so if i remove this batch section and let's say i add this value over here and i delete this and let's say now i do a get because there is nothing mentioned in the request body so i'm selecting get over here and as you can see i am getting the appropriate results so this is how you can implement batching to combine multiple requests and get the appropriate outcome or response from Microsoft Graph API. Now for this video, I assume that you already know how to use Postman because there are multiple videos that exist in the channel. If you have not seen them, you can go ahead and check how to configure client credential flow so that you can access Microsoft Graph API. As well as wherever possible, we'll try to post some videos which are more over related to different scripts as well, which you might have already seen in the channel. But if you want to know how to start from scratch, considering joining our channel. Let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed in this particular video. We have discussed about batching process, the purpose of batch endpoint, how multiple queries can be combined in one single request. In the next video, we are going to talk about Microsoft Graph metadata now if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community thank you so much thanks for your time